Have you ever wondered why there is a West Virginia and a Virginia? Let's look at some of the reasons that led to the split of this original state of Virginia. Learning the history of the United States of America gives us an appreciation for how our ancestors fought for and achieved goals despite seemingly unsurmountable obstacles. I was born and raised in West Virginia until moving to Tennessee at the age of 13. All of you have been with me to my home state and now have an appreciation for its ruggedness and beauty. <coughs> the citizens of Northern West Virginia did not have a connection with, feel politically represented by, and were more pro-union than the rest of Virginia. These differences led to the creation of West Virginia. Now let's look at each of these differences individually. The people of Northern West Virginia wanted to become their own state because they did not associate themselves with the rest of Virginia. In, the, in fact, in the 2005 article, The Curious Creation of West Virginia, Anne Fredrickson quoted Mark Payne as saying, they did not feel tightly connected to the rest of Virginia. One of the reasons for this is the nationality of the descendants of each area. The area that would become West Virginia was colonized by German, Scottish, Irish, and Welsh des uh, descendants. The area of Eastern Virginia was English settlers. Because of this difference, the citizens of present-day West Virginia associate themselves more with northern states with the same lineage than with the rest of Virginia. Now let's examine why they felt politically isolated. The citizens of western and northern Virginia did not feel they were as equally represented politically as the eastern part of the state. During this time frame in American history, voting rights were determined by land ownership. And there were many more landowners in the eastern part of Virginia than in the area that would become West Virginia. Another voting or representational constraint was the vast number of differences of slaves in each area. The terrain in western Virginia was mountainous because it's in the Appalachian mountain chain. And so the creation of plantations and large farms was not possible. The flat terrain in the eastern part made it possible for large plantations and therefore many slaves were used to work on those plantations. In the 1997 article, Lincoln and the Political Question, the creation of the state of West Virginia, the population in 1860 in the area that is now West Virginia was approximately 400,000, 18 of which were slaves. At that same time frame, the population of slaves alone in eastern Virginia was 470,000. And because of this, there was a lot more um, representation politically because, according to the same article, although slaves could not vote at this time in American history, the number of slaves were used to calculate the number of representatives in state legislature of each area. And with that many slaves, the eastern part of the state had many more legislatures than the western part, and therefore they just didn't feel like they were represented politically. And they didn't have any um, way in in the political decisions of the state. Now, slavery is not the only reason that West Virginia became a state, but it is the issue that led that enabled it to happen. Although the citizens of northern West Virginia had numerous issues with the remainder of Virginia, the issues surrounding the start of the Civil War is actually what led to it becoming a state. In the article West Virginia Statehood, June 20, 1863, found on the website archives.gov, these re events are revealed. First, the state of Virginia, in an attempt to protect its right to use slavery, proposed to succeed from the Union in April of 1861, despite many legislatures of the North and West being against it. The proposal was ratified by Virginia voters in May of 1861. In June of 1861, pro-Union Virginians, mainly in the North and the West, formed the restored government of Virginia. And this government was was uh, recognized by the Union as the official government of Virginia. And now this is very important because there's language in the Constitution that states, 
for a new state to be formed from an original state, the original state has to give consent. Well, Virginia would not do that in previous attempts. And an example of this is given in the 1997 article by Ricards, Lincoln, the political question, the creation of the state of West Virginia, is Massachusetts consented to the formation of Maine in 1819. Well, the restored government of Virginia, therefore, voted to create the new state of West Virginia in August of 1861, and President Abraham Lincoln officially proclaimed West Virginia the 35th State of the Union on June 20th, 1863. Now let's recap why West Virginians wanted their own state and the events that led to it becoming a reality. The actions, the citizens, and what would become West Virginia felt more of a connection with northern states than they did with the rest of Virginia. They did not feel they were politi politically represented because of the massive difference of the numbers of representatives of state legislature. They were much more pro-union and the events that followed the secession of Virginia from the Union led to West Virginia becoming the 35th state of the United States of America. The determination and dedication to the beliefs of these people to continue pursuing their dreams and succeeding should be an inspiration to all of us to never give up on our dreams.